On the paper talk today, we'll be looking at a new candidate who's emerged for the Manchester United job. We'll also be looking at what the situation is with Eric Ten Hag and why he feels he should have been offered a deal by now. So make sure you check it all out. Jay here from Stretford Paddock. This is the paper talk. As you can see, I'm outside Old Trafford where it's pretty mild to be honest with you. I've actually taken my parker off, but I've got it with me, just so you're clear. Uh, we'll get straight into it. Loads of stories doing the rounds about Manchester United's next potential manager. Uh, there's a story in the Express saying that Man United have now interviewed two other candidates into, in addition to Eric Ten Hag. I'm going to get into that story. There's, I'm also going to get into a story about one of those potential other candidates and another little bit of an update on um, just what's going on with Ten Hag, what the situation is with him. So, we'll start with this one, the battle of two other candidates. Now, this is in the Express, but it seems to have come from the United We Stand podcast and Andy Mitten, Andy Mitten, who I know very well, he's been on the channel, I've known him for years, he does his due diligence when it comes to his stories, so if he says it, I believe it. Um, and it looks like the Express and a couple of other papers have picked up on it from there and said that United have not just interviewed Eric Ten Hag, but two other candidates as well. Now, I don't think Andy Mitten said who those other candidates were, but reports have been sort of doing the rounds that Julian Lopetegui, and I was, I'm pronouncing that drastically wrong, but forgive me, and um, Maurizio Pochettino are the two main candidates. So it makes sense that they are the ones who've been interviewed. I don't know the nature of that interview. I don't even know if it's definitely them, but you, you would think so. So that seems to be where we're up to in terms of the interview process. But there's another story doing the rounds about another potential Manchester United manager, and this is Luis Enrique. Now, we've had this story for a few weeks. Um, he, there was a four-man shortlist and he was one of them. Now, the, the sort of flying the ointment, if you will, is that he's obviously managing Spain in the World Cup. So he can't come to United in the summer, not, le not unless he wants to quit Spain, which he ain't going to do. So the, the, the sort of the reasoning behind all this is that he's going to come after the World Cup and maybe Ralph Ragnick stays on until then, does an extra few months, which would make sense. My only slight concern with that is, do you want a new manager in for the summer? Do you want him here or, you know, with pre-season training, taking pre-season, going over transfers, seeing who he's got to get out of the club as well as get in the club as well? It's going to be a big summer for Manchester United and you'd want a manager to be fully focused on that and involved in that to 100%, not managing a, uh, a team for the biggest tournament in, in international football and not certainly not looking ahead to that and so having a look at what's going on at Manchester United as well. It doesn't make sense to me. Enrique is obviously a very talented manager and there's a school of thought, well, if you can get him, just get him. I'm not so sure. I think that story came from Mike Keegan in the Daily Mail who had that one. Um, and he just said that he's a strong contender, Luis Enrique, and he's got many admirers here at Old Trafford. You don't know what that means, to be honest with you. Many admirers, it could mean that the, 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 they're adamant they want him or it could mean that someone like Joel Glaze has heard of him. And that's, you know, that's good enough. So we'll have to wait and see what's happening with that one. On the Eric Ten Hag front, now, there's several stories or reports doing the rounds this morning and they're all sort of the same story but in different words and it's saying that um, Eric Ten Hag is baffled by United stalling on a contract approach um, so he's been a bit baffled I've seen amazed I mean someone look at it it's a bit of a slap in the face that he's not had a, a contract offer yet um, but he's had his interview should United be making an offer right away if they've got other candidates I'm not so sure However, according to the, the rumours, reports, stories, whatever you want to term them, he is a little bit baffled, amazed, confused are the words I'm seeing in, in respect to United not offering him a deal. And it also says as well that his wages won't be an issue. He's made it clear that money's not really the, the main motivating factor for him coming to Manchester United, unlike a lot of other people there, it would seem. <laughs> but he's happy to come here if he's going to be part of something. Um, and it also says that the board were impressed with him in his interview. These are stories doing the rounds. They're all saying the same thing, to be honest with you. The board were impressed with him. He's done well. He's the hot favourite. We've said this to you all along, but he's a bit baffled that he hasn't had a contract just slapped down in front of him and said, you know, sign there, Eric. It's all yours. We'll have to see what happens, though. We'll keep you updated, as always. It does seem like Eric Ten Hag is the favourite. Luis Enrique is also in the fold. Maurizio Pochettino is also in the fold. Lopetegui is also in the fold. So it's not a done deal as in, that's it, it's over. He signed because he hasn't. He hasn't had that contract. But it does look like it's heading towards that. And that's probably why he's a little bit surprised that, OK, I've given an interview. I've absolutely smashed it. Everyone's saying that I've got the job or, you know, the, the sort of the, the rumours, the reports, the, the, the sort of it, the, the stories are that I've got this job. And obviously the board are giving him good vibes as well because he's coming out and saying, well, why have I not got a contract then? So, you know, you've all been for a job interview and you know when it's gone badly, don't you? Eh? You think, oh, I'll tell you what. 
that right up. Do you know what I mean? But he's obviously thinking, no, that went well. Didn't do it. Didn't embarrass myself. Didn't say anything I shouldn't have done. Seems to have pressed them all. They love my PowerPoint presentation. They love what I had to say. They like the, the suit I was wearing. It was all gravy. Let's get let's get this done. No, not Manchester United. We're still waiting. That's not the end of the world because it is a big decision to bring in a new manager. So you don't expect them to just go right. You know what? We really like you. The job's yours. I can understand them wanting to speak to other candidates, and it seems like a much better process than the one that appointed David Moyes here as manager, where Sir Alex Ferguson just went round to his house and said, "What are you doing for the next six years?" And David Moyes was like, I don't know, managing Everton. No, no, you're managing Manchester United, you're taking over from me. All oh, right, nice one, great stuff. Except we all know that, how that ended. Ended after, what, eight and a half months. So I understand there's a process. I understand they're doing, doing it the right way. It's just a little bit frustrating for obviously Eric Ten Hag and as a fan's point of view, because you want to know who your next manager is, because we're all giddy to find out, aren't we? That's the, the, the truth of it. It does seem like Eric Ten Hag is the massive favourite amongst Manchester United fans, according to Twitter and the people that have been doing the polls and all that. I know that doesn't give you a full picture, but whenever you see it sort of trending and there's all these polls that are doing the rounds, Eric Ten Hag seems to be the preferred choice of Manchester United fans. So get involved in the comments and let us know if he's your preferred choice, if he's the one that rocks your world, or if there's someone else that you'd like to see coming in to Manchester United, whether that's Enrique, whether that's Pochettino, whether it's even Lopetegui. Let us know in the comments. Uh, as always, we'll be back later on, we'll have the Paddock podcast, so make sure you're checking that out. Don't forget as well to give us a subscribe. Let's get to 700,000 subscribers by the end of the season with your support. We can do it. We've got loads of good content coming up this week and we'll be looking ahead to the Leicester game. Yes, you've had your little break from Manchester United and now it's back to being frustrated, disappointed and angry because we've got more football matches to play. So make sure you're checking out. We'll have that, all the preview and then obviously the watch along with the post-match reaction and all that good stuff later on in the week. I've been Jay Motty. This has been the Paper Talk Outsider. Relatively pleasant Old Trafford. I won't be saying that this weekend. Thanks for watching.